Welcome back, guys, to CFL Central, CFL content for the fans, by the fans. And we have our review of week four of CFL action. We got three games here, but a decent amount to talk about in the, each of these three games. We got we start off <clears throat> with the Edmonton Elks versus the Ottawa Red Blacks, the battle of the two teams who can't win at home. And the thing is, is that if you're Edmonton, <clears throat> you're thinking, man, we have such a bad streak at home, but if at least we can keep that the 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 shadow of the Red Blacks with us, it's like we're not the only team that is uh, in there. Well, not anymore. Ottawa wins at home, a decisive twenty six to seven victory, and all things look up if you're the Red Blacks as <clears throat> you win this game, you win decisively, and Jeremiah Baz- Mazzoli is back on the field now. So. Um, so Exciting time will, if you're a Red Blacks fan, I gotta say, for this week. I, I will give you my two cents because Please. this guy racked up the kilometers this weekend and went to all three games. Oh my goodness, yeah. One of them you have to, this, you had to sit in the stadium waiting for it to start. Oh, we'll get to that one. Yo, yo, um, trust me, I can't wait. So this one here... I honestly don't even know anymore how Chris Jones is like, I understand, you know, salary caps for coaches and they got to still pay him. But what is Chris Jones thinking starting Jarrett Do- Dogey? Like he had one good week in garbage time and that was it. Well, I think I think the hope was that if there's any team he's going to have success against, it might be the Red Blacks. But it looks like Cornelius I mean, might be going back in, which I mean, like, what, but, sure. But like, the what, thing what do you is, do? Like, like, it's I honestly, I know we'll get into the game later on. This reminds me of a lower end of the Toronto BC game yep. because. Ottawa got their points off of three interceptions for Edmonton. Yeah. I mean, Tuggle had 126 yards rushing for one touchdown. It's funny. You said the word interception, and I'm just thinking about one of our games that we have later this week that we're going to have to get into. Uh, (laughs) But, yeah, like, like even Ottawa's highest receiver only had 58 yards. Like, this is... What I like to call um, the toilet bowl. Yeah, this is well. You know what this is for. You know what this is the 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 memo for it is for the Red Blacks. You're on the board, boys. You're on the board. You know, <laughs> you're on the board. You know, it's like the game, like where you're like playing hockey and you're getting like blown out eight nothing, and then you're like, we got a goal. We broke the shutout. We broke the shutout. You know what I mean? That's what it so seems. It's yeah. It, it's one of those things where, like, if you're if you're if you're Ottawa here, if you're if you're Edmonton here, you throw one touchdown, three interceptions. If you're you know Adams here, you throw one touchdown, average nine point two yards, not great. No. Got one hundred and eighty five, went fourteen for twenty. But he got the job done. He he got he got the job done. <laughs> and, but and, and the thing is, I remember I saw someone being like. Well, the Red Blacks finally got a win. Mazzoli's coming back. Uh, because the guy got the win, are they just going to stick with him? I'm like, fuck no. When Mazzoli <laughs> is ready, Mazzoli um, is playing. Is that a question? It's, it's it's funny. It's funny that you mentioned that because the second that I sent it in our Discord channel group that Mazzoli was starting, you see someone mentioning breaking news. Ty Cat signs Marino. I'm like, no, we don't need Marino. We've yeah. got Chris Edwards. He'll just go shake Mazzoli's hand and then push him to the ground. He'll shake his hand and they'll kick him in the fucking knee. That's what happened. <laughs> he'll kick but him I mean, in the but, but here's the thing, though. Like, even if you look at Ottawa's top receiver, he only has 58 yards. Like, that 58 yeah. yards ain't going to get you nothing. Ackland only and, 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 had and, and, two and, catches for forty nine. And who got the fifty the fifty eight yards? Marco Dubois. Dubois. Oh, Dubois. Or... That'd be Dubois. Yeah. 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 yeah he, on mine here, he only has fifty four. 
Right. Okay, well, I'm going. I'm going by CFL.ca. Okay, fair enough. I'm I going would, by just. The we don't story. know how accurate those are yet either. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was about to say. Well, you know what we need. We we need. Uh, we need for the the all the PFF stuff to be coming in. I got. I, I gotta. We gotta check into that. We really should. Because if they do all the advanced stats and analytics, you'd think they'd have it the simple seems... shit down. So I have a theory on this weekend across all three games. Mm-hmm. And you want to tell any offensive line to finally show up during any of these three games because no offensive line bothered to show up this weekend. Blue Bombers did. <laughs> blue Bombers did. Like yeah, that we had with that the Blue Bombers I mean, O line showed up. Compared to fun. last week. <laughs> compared to last week where it was like it was like Lord of Rings, like the gates of Mordor, like opening up and like the army is flooding inwards. That's what happened last week. That's what the Lions did to us. Now, did the Lions do that to the Argonauts? Oh, boy, oh, boy, we'll get to that game. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But, like, if you're the Red Blacks, you have to be happy that you get a win here. You have to at least feel something. You put up almost 30 points at home. That's nice. You only gave up seven. Overall, not too bad. You got to feel excited with the fact that a guy like Jeremiah is always going to be back because there was a good amount, a decent amount of promise with this team when he was there, but he's just been gone for so long. So in my opinion, if you're the Red Blacks here, like you got to you got to at least be like, okay, let's get Mazzoli back. Let's let's have some games with him at the helm. That will give you a real, a better idea of how good your team actually is. Because now you have the, like the the basic essentials of life in, in on a football team. You know, you got your food, you got your water, and you got your starting quarterback. They haven't had a starting <laughs> quarterback for a while. You know, and so it, it, it's one of those things is... where they'll at least have that, and at that point they'll kind of be able to better judge. Uh, where the real problems are on their team rather than, oh, there's a little bit of a problem here. There's a lot of a problem here. There's a lot of a problem here. And there's a little bit of a problem here, you know? But I have some questions to throw out there. Yeah. A, yep. what does Mazzoli have left in the tank? What does Mazzoli have left ev- in the tank? Fuck, because even more than with Adams. Us, that he has more than Adams. That's no, but, what he has. No, <laughs> but what I'm saying is injury-wise, he's uh-huh. injured prone, even uh-huh. when he was with us, so... Again, yeah. what does his body have left in the yeah, tank? Yeah, he's uh, him and him and William Stamback have been going through the the battle of who can be more injury prone. Caleros was in and the running on... for a few years, but then he dropped out, and I was pretty happy about that. Oh, and then the course all changes for Edmonton because now Corn Dog is starting this week against Saskatchewan. <laughs> yep, mine. Yeah. Trey Ford is now third string quarterback. Uh, 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 yeah, well, I mean, if you're the Elks, it's like you've 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 invested it all in Cornelius, so fuck it, try to make it work. I mean, uh, you, like you mean the Elk? Did you say Alouettes or the Elks? Or, uh, Alouettes, sorry, I mean Elks. I mean Elks. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The the Alouettes played like the Elks this week. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I don't know. It, it's one of those things where if you're the Elks. Uh, you can you can blame the problems here and there, but uh, all roads lead to Chris Jones. All all roads lead to Chris Jones, and the the, the problems that Chris Jones are and that he is, and you know they got blown twenty six seven by a team that they probably had their best chance of getting a win this season against, and uh, now it doesn't look too promising at all. Do any wins this season? Who fucking knows? I'll have to wait for one of these teams to fall apart. Um, might actually be Calgary or Montreal not thinking about it. Uh, who knows, though? But let's get into our next game of the week. Oh, there we go. Give them time. Give them time. You know, I'm, I was thinking like the, you know, I was thinking of like the, um, what was it? I was thinking of like that waiting music that like you hear in like the elevator while you're going from like the first floor to like the 23rd or wherever it is in those movies. No, you got to get it right. It's the Jeopardy music, or you can the the Jeopardy. Yeah, because that yeah that that'll be our transitions from one hype football game to another. Jeopardy music. Um, feels wrong. With Where do we begin today. with this one? Is Where do we question? begin with this one? 
Oh my god! Oh my god! Can you believe it? We didn't give up 30 points! Fuck yeah, boys! Fuck yeah! We didn't give up 30 points today! Oh my god! It feels so amazing to have a defense that actually exists! And your Woo! offense forgot to show up. What? And your offense forgot to show up. Ah, I mean, like, uh, well, you know. That, <laughs> <laughs> you can't have nope. everything in life now, can you? Well, but the thing nope. is, is but the, here's the thing, though. The defense has been consistently mediocre to subpar mediocre this season. The offense we know is good. A little bit of an off game. But overall... If you're a bomber fan, you gotta be you gotta be happy about this because th this is this is a a good defensive performance. Oh my god! Oh my god! Willie Jefferson, Willie Jefferson was back in form this game. Willie Jefferson was back in form. Now part of the back in form is where he got smacked in the helmet and he was running sideways like this and finished the play. Which, by the way, if you're like like I I don't mean to ever harp on refs. The guy is running with a helmet sideways. Like, I don't know how you don't see the face mask. And if it, and if the evidence that that his ear is sticking through the front of his mask wasn't evidence enough that there was a face mask on the play, I don't know what is. But generally, this this is one of those things where I'm happy to see the bombers back in the win column. I am happy to see them have a bit of a bounce back game from where they were before. Uh, not the best game in the world for Caleros. Now his touchdown interceptions was only, was two to one. So is what it is 15 for 23. That's not my Zach Calero numbers that I wish for. What, but what, what can we actually be really pleased about? The, the, the most consistent running back this year in the CFL, my, my boy, Brady Oliveira. Brady Oliveira has been consistently good all of these games. He has not had an off game, you know, and that's the thing. He didn't, he didn't have, he didn't like he, and he also, he's the only running back to have two games over a hundred yards rushing. And so it's one of those things where if you're the bombers and you have that, that amazing receiver depth, being able to run the ball consistently <laughs> and, and strong like that. It is a is a great skill. I was relatively pleased. Um, so normally on that jet sweep route that we love to run for some fucking reason, uh, even though it never works until uh, this weekend, um, we always have Dembski run it. We we always have Dembski that, run it. That's why it didn't. Sta that's why that play didn't stand out to me. So why why do we have Dembski running it when we have McCray and Re Bailey? Who ran it like three times better than I've ever seen Dembski run that route? Why? Why? M Greg McRae should be running that route because seriously, he's just got he got more speed than Dembski, and that play a hundred percent revolves around speed. Also, one thing I do have to say: uh, Nick Dembski missing this game, of course, because uh, the uh, birth of his of his next child. Uh, so, congratulations to the Dembski family on that. Um, you know. And it's one of those things where I, I'm I'm glad he didn't pay he didn't play in that regard because you know I don't he, think they you know, needed him anyways and and yeah I mean they didn't need him anyways <laughs> I mean Claro's connected on 15 for 23 so who knows maybe maybe the eight that he missed were all the Dembski even though he wasn't I, there. I he, do I do have he, a question he just like threw it and he's like oh where's my boy you know like where'd he go so so my so my question is yep how is it that Sean had 86 yards. Mm -hmm. Wolitarski, the next best receiver, had 29. 29? Yards. Yards. The uh, Your offense never showed up for this game. The Well, the, 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 the throwing game didn't show up. The running game showed up. The throwing game did not show up. Uh, well, I mean, to be honest, I... Not going to lie, I've seen some better throws from Zach Caleros. I actually... Uh, and, like... Montreal, Montreal, I'll give them a little bit of credit in the regard of their defense played a bit better than expected this game, I will say. I'll put it I'll put it this way. I I didn't expect them to hold the Bombers to under 20 points. 
Now, were there were there some self inflicted errors by the bombers? Of course, there was. There 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 always is. We just can't escape them for the life of me. However, um, it, it's one of those things where we also have to take into account the the Owlets actually played relatively solid in coverage, and I mean they were they were able to get an interception, so decent there. Um, Got a touchdown for Schoen Walatarski. That's one thing that I will say that I love about Walatarski and I love about Schoen is that when you get in the red zone and you're going for and you're going for those passes into the end zone, they'll be able to stretch that onto the corners and keep that foot in. They'll be able to, they'll be able to go for those passes and get that done. And so I've been relatively pleased with them there. But I I, I don't I'm not I'm trying not to harp too much about on the offense about this because realistically. They've been pretty consistent up until this game, and the defense got back in form this game, and the defense was more the problem uh, that needed to be solved. So now at least we've seen a defense that's able to put up a damn good performance, and we already know that the offense has been able to put up a good performance despite um, them maybe not putting up as much as we'd hope. Has anyone ever called Montreal to see if Fajardo's out of the hospital because he took another beating in the sack department? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah uh, man, the uh, the offensive line for the uh, Montreal sixteen and three yeah. games. Like I'm just four I, games. I, I'm waiting to like see like a clip of like th- Cody Fajardo like freaking throwing his helmet across the dressing room or something. Like somebody please help me. The the funny like, thing just... is, I was looking at I was looking at the numbers over the weekend. Yep. If he averages two point five sacks against for the rest of the season. He will tie his fifty-four rack or fifty-four sack record with Saskatchewan last year. That's still crazy. Fifty-four sacks like this, just absolutely. Oh, also, yeah, I'm gonna give a shout out to your boy Alexander, who I sent you the video for his amazing <laughs> goal line interception that Fajardo did not. Yes, he was throwing it. Yes, I, I, I'll, I'll see if I'm able to splice that footage over top of this. If I can, then I, then I will. But I, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure if I can. I'll, I'll have to see. I'm still like, I'm not fully phased out with this app that I use for this. But as soon, soon as you've seen it, you're like, that's my boy. Well, you know, you know, what we'll do <laughs> if I'm not, if I'm not able to get it on the video, I'll post it on the Instagram. That's what I'll do. So that way, yeah. we just will have that up. Mm-hmm. Um, get some, get some good photo, uh, good footage and- of some of the few good passes that we had that game um, At, and then they decided to uh, interception i think gorgeous. was it ben was it ben major who refed the one and peg game and then you guys had a touchdown called back i, I can't remember ref names <laughs> you're you just don't don't oh, do that. i i don't know do i me. i have the list of like so every game i yeah. go i always like look to see yeah. who it is to see who's yeah. you, you'll just like You'll be at the game. You'll turn on the television. You'll be like, "Hey, Suter's doing this game. Thank fuck, I'm here." You know, like <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Literally, I I was I, when I was listening to the the BC Toronto game, I heard Suter's voice, and I'm thinking, "Oh, Rick is so happy he's at this game." Man, some of the, some of the things I heard coming out of that mouth, I was like, "Oh boy," he's like, "Man, um, the battle between the two undefeated teams, like." It, it, it's it's unbelievable it, it's unbelievable how this will be a good match and i was just like what is what 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 who could believe that two um, undefeated teams would have a good game like are you are you guys are you guys trying to develop your own swag kelly and jake kelly or cornerback trying to throw a pass i i don't i don't know what we're trying to do i don't know what we're trying or, to do or Sheehan, your uh, punter, trying we, to we, throw. See, a... the thing is, when you're when you're in Winnipeg, you have to treat Mike O'Shea kind of. You, you have to give him the Steve Eiserman treatment. You know what I mean? It's just like trust the plan. Let let, let him cook. Let him cook. I know. I know you got questions. I know some of it don't make sense. Just just <laughs> let let him cook. You know what I mean? It's one of those things. Tr- trust the process. And I mean, he's got us two great cups before, uh, and uh, he brought us to another great cup game last year. So I mean. We'll trust the process. So final score of the game, 17 to three. And then it's funny. We're going to go into a game where I didn't have really that much of an emotional investment for the fact that so, I, I prefer, I, I actually getting... like, I like the lions more than the Argos, but as a bomber fan, you want the Argos to win this game because it gives the bombers a better seating in the West. And I'm just going to throw out there because I'm wearing this does not make me an Argo fan. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, 
Look at that. My goal is to buy a hat. Tim Hortons Field. Look just... at this fucking season ticket member. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this one. This no, because man. we do our videos. I would never. Wear, I, I don't think I can ever bring myself to wear that disgusting green hat. Ever. I don't think I can ever do that to myself. Well, I have all my other hats Look just that. because in our team videos, God, that I want to be able to have. that up so much. Oh, like I know. You, it's it's like you got this, like the, I you, kid you. I it's kid like you my not. Lion's this. Hat. It's like my lion's hat. My lion's hat pops up so. Maybe, maybe I'll put my lion's hat on for this one. You're putting the the Argos. Put <laughs> Here we go. It is the hat. That is the the hat of interceptions. Here we go. Here we go. Um, the thing is though, this hat I kid you not was fifty bucks at the store. Yeah. To to be, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, when I'm at the Bomber game this week, uh, not going to be paying a whole lot less than that. I I will say, I will like give 40, a shout 45. out. But I, I, I have a season get, ticket discount. I'll help you out there. I will give a shout out where it deserves. All of the Argo fans that did show up on a Monday night, can't, uh, July 3rd. They're pretty loud. Shout out to all. Oh, they were loud. There was 12,000 fans. Apparently, it's gone up 3,000 fans. 3,000 fans since last year. Yeah, that's so good. I, I mean, give... someday they might be able to open the upper bowl. But I will give them credit for actually starting to show up. It, it's it, it, it's it's it it's, in, it's improving, which yes. it's still not great. But if we're going to talk about it, 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 it's follow the yellow brick road for another 10 miles, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh 45 to 24. Oh, bo- oh. So oh. here, so here, three here's the thing. touchdowns, six interceptions for Vernon Adams Jr. That is, that is a very much of an ouch. Like what happened, you know? And also you have Dominic Rhymes playing and out of all your receivers, do you know which like out of the receivers who's had the most like yards? He he has his he, he got three recept you three he has three receptions this game. You did you couldn't get more receptions from Dominic Rhymes, really? I mean I uh, he might be three that, for ten. He went three he went three for ten. Three for three ten. for ten. And I can guarantee you at least one of those is a pick because there's four receivers and there's three and there's six picks. Well, Six picks, and way. I think two of them at least were pick six. Put it this way: three of t- two of those three were touchdowns. Yep. <laughs> Although here's here's the thing that that is also fair to remember: we keep saying Swag Kelly. He got mm. 249 yards. Went 29 for uh, 23 for 29. He had one touchdown. Just one. On a 45 point game night. He only threw one. So I, I I will say though, the receiver that I've because I know some people that are season ticket holders and the yep. games that I've seen, yep. the one receiver that has been the most consistent for this team like Argos? is not gonna be is not gonna be one that you would think would be like a top receiver. And oh. that is Cam Phillips. Well, I mean well, I mean, you. I, I know I'm like resisting to. I'm, I'm, re, I'm resisting the urge to mention that I don't know how many top receivers the Argos have, uh, but but Philip Philip Phillips has has done well because Gitt, Gittins Junior would would I guess be I guess where you mentally would be your go to, in terms of who you would expect. Uh, Phillips has has done has done well though, Cam Phillips, and so it's one of those things where if you're if you're the Argonauts, you're really hoping to to kind of have him slide into that bigger role. But man, like the the thing the thing I'm so confused about the Lions this game is why the Lions didn't try to run the ball more. Like I understood that their offensive line was getting blown out, but like they had 39 attempts. He went 24 for 39. Like they tried to throw the ball 39 times that game. Hey, that if, that if is should... that is a lot of attempts, especially a lot of attempts for a guy that got six picks. Just if it, if it makes if it makes you feel any better, last week when we played Montreal, Schultz threw for forty nine or forty five. So I mean, 
Um, but that's a different game, but still. Fuck, let me find my medal for you. One sec. <laughs> Here we go. The oh, undisputed and... champion of the world! <laughs> and to add to those six interceptions, yep. don't forget, this and this was actually brought out by a fan that I spoke to on the on Twitter the other the other night. Yep. Shout out to uh, a fan that I met the other day, Nick Small. I'm surprised um, you found him on Twitter. You can only read 600 tweets now. Yeah, no kidding. Um, so he actually Stupid brought out bro. the point that Adams threw three touchdowns, six interceptions, but also 388 yards. Yeah. Who would and, have thought and, that you and, and I bet you he threw for six hundred yards when you talk about all the yards of the Argos running it back into the end zone. The uh I'm I'm not gonna lie, like this this is such a confusing game because on on one hand you're like, man, Vernon Adam Jr. fell apart. And then you're like, okay, he threw for three hundred and eighty eight yards. Threw twenty three for uh twenty uh you know or no, it wasn't thirty for, for... For 29. Sorry, I was misreading. I said 39. Okay, that's not nearly as bad. Uh, 23 for 29. You're, no, I'm looking at the... No, I'm wrong. I was looking at Chad <laughs> Kelly. I was looking at Chad Kelly. Vernon Adams still sucks. He threw 24 for 39. So, and then, like, he threw for 388. But then he did that. He got three touchdowns, but then he got six, uh, six picks. So, it's, it's kind of a difficult thing because as well as, like, do you say, oh my goodness, what an amazing defensive effort by the Toronto Argonauts? Because on you could say that, but they also gave up 24 points tonight. Or not tonight. Just off of turnovers. They, just they gave off up turnovers. Yes. They gave up 24 points at the same time. So it's just, you know. And one thing I will say is one one area where I was the, the Argos were surprisingly not doing that great in was short yardage. There was like... I think two times, one or two times, where they had turnover on downs because they couldn't get one yard. Little, uh... the, well, no, uh, but like thing... when you have Andrew Harris, AJ Olette, and Chad Kelly is one of your leading rushers, you yeah. should be able to get that one yard. And AJ Olette has been <clears throat> has been playing really well or whatever. So it's one of those things where I I generally I I think that they've. They they they've performed really well in the in terms of the running sort of thing. Uh, I bet you Andrew Harris would love to actually play though. You know, the thing that stood out to me is I don't know why they did not run the rushing touchdown with Kelly instead of Duke. Like they ran it with Dukes instead of Kelly. I would have done Kelly instead of Dukes. And why is that? Oh, I have no idea. I mean, I'm not Ryan Dinwiddie, <laughs> so I don't make the, the tough decisions. I, I would I would have done this instead of this. Why would you do that? I don't know. I'm fucking know. Why the fuck you ask me? <laughs> I, I will give props where they deserve. Yep. And Jamal Peters intercepted three times against Dane Evans when Dane That's Evans true. was with us last year. This year, it is not Jamal Peters. It is Robertson Daniel who got three interceptions off and of Vernon Adams Jr. So I think Vernon Adams Jr. needs to stop playing pass with Dane Evans on the sideline playing catch. And yeah, he's stop learning a little too easy. With, he's got a with the Argo defense and start playing catch with his receivers. That's fair. I mean, like I said, a guy like Dominic Rhymes should not be going three for 10 on. That's that that but that's, I mean, that should be one of your guys that you that you got locked down. But I mean, like overall, so the Argonauts win this game. They slide into the number one spot in the power rankings. The Lions drop to third. A decent amount of people are mad about this because of the Lions beating the Bombers. But I mean, like they threw six picks. The Bombers fixed the number one problem that they had against the Lions. I think it's fair to put the, the Bombers in that number two spot. So the Argots slide into that number one spot. Not going to lie. I've seen a lot of Argonauts fans on the high horse about we are the best team in this league. And I'm like, we'll see about that. But uh, but over, I, overall, the, <clears throat> like, is there anything else you got you got to say about this week of football? I pretty much got everything um, covered. I, I just want to make one more comment yep. that I know Argo fans are going to hate me for saying this. While you're wearing but, your hat, no, no, no. It's not me saying this. It's oh, uh, that oh, I've oh. I've heard from media people. Yeah, throw them people is, under the bus. Them media people. Yes. 
is the fact that media is saying Argos will not go 18 and 0 this year. They're going to lose to someone. They won't go 18 straight games without losing. Who could have guessed? Who could have the, the, guessed? The thing that the thing that kills me is they're on a bye week this week. And in two weeks, they're on another bye. Or in three weeks, they're on another bye. It's like, or no, you, sorry. You bye week this your... week, and then they have a bye week at the beginning of August. And now, because of the Atlantic Canon and everything, they don't have a, a home game to the 14th of August. Oh, boy. It's a while. Yeah. Yeah, they got they got a they got an okay schedule coming um, up for a bit, so they, they'll be able to extend this this undefeated streak a bit. I'll take that but, hat off now. <laughs> but, yeah, no, that's fair. No, I understand that you don't want to wear that longer, and you have to. Uh, nor for me, a rider's hat. It, it it the have to is it staying in the store, um, <laughs> and not moving. So well, no, yeah, I mean, you have you have flags. I don't. So I got. Yeah, I, I have flags, so I can just like leave them there and then have the pleasure of taking it down afterwards. Um, but um, but yeah. So let me guys know what your uh, your thoughts on these games are in the comments down below. Uh, we're gonna make sure that I think it was tomorrow. We're probably gonna be doing our preview of the uh of the next week of the CFL. We got week five coming up. This season is going by quick. I find. Uh, but it's been fun so far. It's going to be fun continuing till the end. Make sure you guys, again, leave a comment down below. Like, share, and subscribe if you guys have not already. And we will see you guys next time. Touchdown!